What's up, folks? Maximilian here, and I uh, wanted to bring it back to some of these, like, arcade stories and this type of stuff that I was doing every single weekend. Um, I still do have some arcade stories, but I keep getting this question that I would love to acknowledge in this, uh, in this episode of, like, Real Talk. And it's, uh, relationships and gaming. Like, having a relationship with somebody, maintaining that, and still being able to do things that you like doing, which is essentially things like playing video games. Um, for the most part, I, I think I'm kind of experienced in this because I went through a few periods of my life where I had to, like, choose between the things that I really like to do and the relationships that people I can have, and stuff like that. So, uh, the, the question generally is, like, what's it like being married and still being able to, like, play video games and, you know, in, encourage video game playing with other people and enjoy it, essentially. And, uh, what did you have to give up and things like that. So I'll just give you guys a brief history lesson for the most part. Um, the luckiest thing I've had with the relationship I've had with my wife, Jessica, is the fact that when we got together, we both kind of like games. Uh, when we met, we actually met where the place I worked, which is at Electronics Boutique, which is actually now gone, I think, in the United States. Um, and has been soaked up by EB Games and GameStop and stuff like that. And, uh, she would eventually, or she would come into the store every once in a while, and I would just have chit-chats with her. And the biggest thing that happened as a result of that and why she initially became interested in me was because... I did a lot of artwork back in the day, like I drew all the time, and I would draw huge mural art, so I had these gigantic mural arts of like video game characters and stuff like that everywhere, between like Final Fantasy 7 and like Dino Crisis and all this crazy stuff, and I would hang them up on the store because our manager thought it was totally awesome. Hang them up on the upper upper levels of the store and everyone would ask like the drawings and stuff like that because they were huge. They were they were really damn big, like ten feet tall. Anyway, so um I did this artwork and it was all over the store and uh she would come in and ask about that stuff and that's how we kinda got introduced and uh how we got to know each other. Now during that time we never really went in like on a lot of dates or something like that. We went uh, out every once in a while, but I really didn't have like I felt like I didn't have the time for a relationship because I was like in college, going going to work full time, going to school full time. I really liked competitive gaming at the same time. I was playing like a different variety of like competitive games between like Third Strike and a bunch of other stuff. It was it was a very busy time in my life and it just seemed like I have the focus on this right now because it's really important. So we never really, like, got together together, you know? We were never really in a relationship, but for the most part, that was the time where you kind of feel like you have to make a choice. And later in our relationship, when we actually got together, when we actually uh, became a couple and eventually got married, there was the biggest issue that I was really into another game at the time, which was like Final Fantasy XI, which was an MMO. It sucks up a lot of your life. I had never played any other MMO before, but I really, really liked that game. And I was really into it as even when we were uh, first in a relationship. So I was playing a lot of that game at the same time, but also really enjoying the time I was spending with her. So I would separate my time in between these things. The other challenge was that I was the leader of this, like, this link shell that was between Japanese players and English players on this server. And I collected all the English players in this Japanese environment before it came out in the US. And we, well, you know, long story short, I had a lot of responsibilities in this MMO as well, as funny as that sounds. And I really wanted to spend time with my girlfriend at the time to, you know, go out and do things and enjoy stuff because it was fun. It was in, it was enjoyable going out, you know, with somebody and doing all this stuff that you like to do. And that was the biggest thing is like when we got together, we shared a lot of similar interests. Like the few years back where we weren't a couple, uh, we had this similar interest, which was anime. That was back when I was really into like Japanese animation and Miyazaki and stuff like that. I was just hardcore into it and I was drawing all the time and things like that. Um, but then it kind of quickly went away, and later we, when we got together, we learned that playing games together was actually pretty fun. Uh, she didn't play, like, a ton of video games, but she liked certain things, like, she was really good at Puzzle Fighter. She really liked Tetris, and she actually shared this, like, you know, common, like, enjoyability for playing things like Smash Brothers and fighting games and stuff like that. So it was kind of like, oh, this is sweet, we can actually enjoy the things we like together. Um, moving on later down the relationship, you know, when we consider marriage and stuff like that, that was a real critical factor, um, when we decided that we were gonna get married and we were planning things was, man, if I'm in a relationship, it's, especially with somebody that you're gonna be dedicating your life to, you really don't want to have to start sacrificing the things that you love because that's just gonna cause turmoil later on. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've seen in, like, a lot of my friends that have gotten married and things like that is that, when they eventually do get into a relationship, they have to give up something they really like. And I've seen divorces happen later on because they're just unhappy. They just don't enjoy what they're doing anymore because they all the things they previously liked, they don't like. Now, 
A lot of when you get into a relationship, especially marriage with somebody, is about sacrifice. It's about sacrificing something for somebody else and finding a great balance between you two. Um, but some things, like, it's it gets really sensitive whether or not. It's like, if you love skiing, you know, if you're just huge on skiing and snowboarding, but, you know, your, your significant other is like, I don't like you doing that, it's dangerous and stuff like that, and it's like, but I love doing it. If you have to give that up and you find yourself going out and doing it on the weekends with friends and things like that, that's just an example. It's something that will eventually cause problems down the line, and a lot of relationships end because of it. I'm not saying my relationship is perfect by any means. Everyone has their arguments, everyone gets through rough times, and I've had mine by, by all means. But for the most part, the biggest thing that I find uh, appreciative of my relationship with my wife and the things that I do with games is that she has learned to love this stuff as well. Even the things that she really liked, I, I, I found, like, tolerable to the point of which, oh, I kind of like this stuff, too, between, like, shows she's watching or things she's endo she enjoys doing and stuff like that. And even now, like, she really likes certain aspects, like, oh, man, I remember one of the things that really conflicted us early was that she loves dogs, and I had a huge phobia of dogs because, quite literally, I had a dog bite my face off when I was uh, six years old or five years old, created a huge phobia for the rest of my life. Um, I don't know if I'll go into that story anytime soon, but regardless, it was uh, it was very tough to have somebody that really liked being around dogs and stuff like that. And I I eventually started to just I, I knew that she likes this. I can't take this away from her to be comfortable with it, to be okay with it, to try to drop this phobia, to like touch dogs more and stuff like that. And it eventually went away, and I have Benny now. He's the smallest of creatures, but. Regardless, it's it's a it's a step in the right direction, you know what I mean? And she was doing things like, you know, tolerating the fact that I was playing Final Fantasy XI a lot when we were first going out. And I actually stopped playing because it was, it seemed not important anymore. Like, really, when I was playing that game a lot, it was the most important thing ever for like the two and a half, three years that I was playing it. And after, after I got into a relationship with somebody that I really liked, I really wanted just to spend more time with them, and the importance level just, you know, the the bar just went way higher on the importance level of spending time with this person, and eventually just quit playing. Um, now, when it came to competitive games like Street Fighter, the lucky thing is that my wife has always, for some reason, liked it when I play Street Fighter. She really likes it when I play characters like Ken and stuff like that, or characters that look like me. She really digs that, especially guys like Siegfried and Soul Calibur and stuff like that. For some reason, she really enjoys it, so she actually encourages it. She encouraged the fact that we would go out to, like, Street Fighter tournaments, drive all the way out, to, you know, to the middle of uh, Los Angeles to find the Street Fighter 4 cabinet. She enjoyed it, and I really loved that fact about her. She liked going out to these places, going to Comic-Con. She enjoys these, like, type of nerdy things that I do at the same time. And we can actually be friends. I mean, that's the, one of the most important things that I find valuable about the relationship that I have, especially as a guy that really likes, you know, fandom-related things like movies and video games and drawing and, and stuff like that, is that I, I'm, I'm so thankful that I have somebody that enjoys the same things because when we go out and we do stuff and we talk and we talk about the things we're looking forward to or the things we just saw or things like that, it's like I'm talking with my best friend, and I think that's the most important part of the relationship, and especially having a relationship with somebody that is going to share similar interests with you and growing up with games around you and stuff like that, is that you're able to share this with the person that you've chosen to spend your life with. That's It's so important to me that I'm able to do that, that I can actually look at my wife and tell my friends, like, yeah, she's... She's literally my best friend. I tell her things that I, I never tell anybody, and I can talk about things that I can't talk about with anybody, and I can talk about things with her that she knows that I like and I know that she likes, and it's just awesome. It's it's the best part of being in a long-standing relationship when you can actually share things and they completely understand what you're saying when you're talking about it. You can talk about life goals, you can talk about how much work you're putting into something, and they just nurture and support you, and it's like, dude, totally call my wife dude you're like the best friend i've ever had and it's freaking awesome so hopefully you guys got a little bit out of this video hopefully you understand a little bit where i'm coming from uh as far as a dude that's married that's into video games and you know relationships in video games and stuff like that uh if you enjoyed the story i appreciate a thumbs up but as always my name is max and i'll be back next week with another arcade stories or real talk see you then folks